Okay, hi there, welcome to a micro video uh, in which we explore the link between rational decision making and the consequences for consumer welfare. Uh, we've put together a clear the deck revision activity uh, looking at 30 key concepts in behavioral economics. So please check out the link in the comments section of this video to access this great quiz. When building supply and demand models, the assumption is made that consumers and producers both act in a rational way to maximise their own outcomes. Utility for consumers, profit for producers. Now, the key aim of rational consumers is to maximise their own utility or satisfaction when making their choices. And often this involves some cost benefit calculation. In other words, they're weighing up the benefits and the costs of allocating some of their budget, a limited income, to different goods and services. Or they might be deciding how much to save rather than spend in a given time period. The assumption of people acting in a rational way has dominated theory for decades, but I'm sure you'll know that behavioural economics has, has risen to prominence, which caused challenges and questions the assumption of pure rationality. The assumptions of the rational choice model are still worth understanding. First of all, consumers choose independently. My preferences, my tastes uh, do not affect your choices. Secondly, uh, consistent preferences. So if I prefer A to B and I prefer B to C, then if transitivity holds, then I prefer A to C. The assumption is that people gather full, complete information on all the various alternatives. And given this, they always make an optimal choice uh, given their preferences. So consumer welfare is an important concept and it refers to the outcomes for consumers from market activity. And typically, consumer welfare can be illustrated diagrammatically using the concept of consumer surplus. And that's the difference between what people are willing and able to pay and what they actually do pay in the market. Consumer surplus is highest at an equilibrium market clearing price, where the price that consumers are being charged reflects the marginal cost of supply, an allocatively efficient price. But of course, businesses, firms with monopoly power, market power, they can increase prices above a competitive level and that can lead to a deadweight loss of consumer welfare and a loss of allocative efficiency. Let's see how this works in terms of a market. So let's take an equilibrium here. The equilibrium price is A. <coughs> the point of intersection, of course, is C, where supply and demand are imbalance. And at the equilibrium price, uh, at the quantity traded D, the amount or the area of consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve and above the price, area A, B, C. However, if a firm squeezes output, if they squeeze output and raise the price <coughs> from A to F, the output, of course, contracts from D to E. So in this situation, the level of consumer surplus falls from area A, B, C to area F, B, G. <coughs> uh, the assumption of rational choice, of course, can and should be challenged. So behavioural economics <clears throat> tries to bring aspects of psychology into the discussion. Uh, they make a distinction, for example, between a, a, an econ and a human. Econ is said to be in, infinitely rational, a cold calculating machine, immensely intelligent and able to do a cost benefit analysis for every decision. And of course, they learn from their mistakes. Well, that's an assumption, of course. Most of us are not infinitely rational. We're human beings. We face bounded rationality and people have limits to their bounded ability to computate costs and benefits. And instead of making those sort of calculating decisions the whole time, often we just rely on a simple intuitive rule of thumb or heuristic uh, making when making key decisions. There are lots of reasons why people might depart from pure rationality. First of all, they have a limited ability to make complex calculations, particularly when products and decisions are highly complex, involving lots of information. 
Secondly, our choices are not independent. We, 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 we are social animals and our social networks often have a significant influence on the choices we make. We don't always take decisions in a cold, unemotional state. Sometimes emotion overtakes logic. We don't always act purely in our own self-interest. We may be altruistic in terms of our decisions. We may well favour the instant reward. We suffer from bounded control over long-term thinking. And often our choices actually rely heavily on default bias. We stick to the choices we've always made. So lots of reasons why you can challenge and question the assumption of rational choice. And you should do that if you get an essay question in this kind of area. So there we go, a quick video looking at rational decision-making and consumer welfare.